Ah, yeah, I'm making a video, I think. Yeah, looks like it. Ah, uh, so anyway, yeah, out and about. Um, things to do, <laughs> weather coming and whatnot. Almost fell down. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd make a video. Um, I have to do this democracy thing for Vlogger Dome, so I figure I will um, do this video for my own purposes um, to go over the subject and, uh, and yeah, you can watch it or not. <laughs> so it's just uh, me collecting my thoughts, preparing myself for trying to say it um, in a way that's understandable and meaningful to people. Uh, you know, that we can do this. This democracy thing is just pretty much a system design, right? It's one of these things you want to engineer. This idea of civilization, uh, social justice. Um, you know, how do you get to the... Uh, how do you create a system that creates the the best decision making for the collective, you know, for the um, overall society in terms of maintaining what could be called uh, the best interest of some common goals, um, you know, to fertilizing uh, the best of creativity, um, you know, maximizing our productivity. You know, managing us as if we were slaves to uh, efficiency. Uh, you know, slaves to the highest quality of um, existence. You know, that said, we were sort of after that. As individuals and as a collective, we want to be proud of the human race. Uh, we want to glean something out of us all. Um, and do it in some manner where we can all live as richly and as comfortably as possible in achieving the goal. So it's like we do have this task of um, efficiency, of not embarrassing ourselves, uh, reducing harm. Uh, you know, there's there's a there's a, a broad outline of uh, a good functioning society. Um, and you know what it does, you know what it doesn't have in it, you know, which is a lot of rape and murder and exploitation and brutality and all that kind of crap. And so, um, as has been often stated, you know, of all the systems, you know, dictatorship and, you know, finding like the smartest guy and just saying, let him do it, <laughs> you know, let him figure it out, um, you know, that we sort of, there's a, there's a, tends to be an agreement, uh, you know, that some sort of democratic process, some sort of um, equal and um, broad uh, involvement by all of us in the process of developing our own civilization is not only um, fruitful in terms of uh, producing without producing um, the profound negatives, but it's also fruitful in maximizing, again, this, this or protecting against things that would be harmful and um, uh, exploitive and uh, keeping everybody protected uh, from uh, concentration camps and gulags, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also compensating for the inefficiencies for, of nature in terms of being kind of cruel and brutal and um, you know this distribution of, of capacity and ability you know based on uh, rather arbitrary and uh, unresponsive to, to character um, deserve has nothing to do with it and I guess one could argue that the, the whole point of civilization is to to sort of make deserve have everything to do with it, or try to, at least. So anyway, there's this general agreement that something democratic, uh, you know, something that empowers everybody, that gets everybody connected to the system, thinking about the system, wanting to be uh, a part of it, would be the best plan. And. Uh, there's so many ways to implement that participation. Uh, and we, you know, in a 
we, we have a system invented, you know, over 250 years ago, and it's a it's an inadequate system in the sense that it's uh, based on a time when we didn't have the technology to communicate well, um, and we were creatures of our geographic environment. We were all kind of segregated. Uh, you know, the Quakers all lived in one pile, and the, the, the holistics left lived in another pile, and the, you know, it, it was just a very different kind of world than it is now. And so we had a system to glean opinion and uh, participation that was primarily geographic. You basically voted as a region. That was your representation. You were represented uh, as a regional identity. Uh, and clearly that's, from me personally, and from logically making an argument here, that I'm not my geography. This geography has absolutely nothing <laughs> to do with what I philosophically believe, uh, what I understand to be in the best interest of human beings or the best policy for human beings. This geography doesn't have much, if anything, a tiny percentage of my philosophy would be related to geography. Um, I could argue because I live in a watershed area, uh, you know, that I might have some more awareness of issues of, you know, keeping water clean uh, protecting environments, uh, but that's just knowledge I've acquired through personal experience, and it doesn't really have anything to do with anything that would be uh, relevant uh, beyond just having knowledge of. And isn't that the, the thing we're really wanting people to have is knowledge of? We could say that, you know, some sort of direct democracy, um, some sort of just let the people electronically vote online you know, on every bill uh, proposed uh, would be the ideal democracy. Uh, but the problem there is there isn't an even distribution of knowledge that the uh, people doing the voting wouldn't be doing the listening. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't have an obligation to know something about what they're voting on. They could just they'd be voting based on a bigotry, um, based on some uh, brief pigeonhole description of what the thing is, uh, based on who's for it. You know, they just say, well, that guy's for it. I must be against it because he's, he's evil. It would be that kind of simplistic um, judgment. And uh, the voting will also would be self-interested, which just means that, you know, people would end up voting for things that are impossible, like, you know, uh, increased spending on social infrastructure and lower taxes, you know, stuff that's just not rational, reasonable, and that's what our representatives would end up doing, um, because our representatives aren't the best of us, they're whoever lies the best. <laughs> you know, the politics is so corrupt and so dishonest, uh, you know, that it has almost become uh, a representative of a, the worst of our character rather than the best of our character. If the game is really just about stealing the other guy's vote because of this uh, winner-take-all uh, mechanism uh, that's been geographically imposed. So because I geographically live in an area where the majority of people have a certain ideology, uh, I'll never have somebody representing me in Congress who says anything I agree with, <laughs> ever. There'll always be somebody I voted against, not somebody I voted for. Uh, so there's clearly no participation by me in the system. No, um, uh, yeah, I just don't have a realistic uh, piece of representation uh, uh, 
power uh, influence that I'm entitled to. Um, and we don't have to have a system like that. We don't have to have a winner take all. Uh, you steal uh, the other guy's representation by having a, a geographic battle uh, to own the entire region when all you should really own is your own vote. Um, and uh, you shouldn't be stealing the power of somebody else's. Uh, you could argue like things in the Senate. These are like obvious um, inequities where, uh, you know, an individual living in the state of California has one thirtieth of the political uh, reality, the political power of an individual living in Alaska. Uh, merely because of the demographics and the fact that we have uh, portioned power based on uh, region again. Geography is defining rather than ideology defining or more importantly principles like you know one man one vote defining. So you end up with huge inequities where uh, for no logical reason uh, somebody living in California uh, is rendered one you know 30 times uh, a less meaningful vote. Um, so yeah, it's all just to, you can have different kinds of systems and if you implement a couple of simple policies, um, instant runoff voting is just one of them, is this technology of allowing people, well let's first say, I ought to say something about the idea of representation. Um, just as the, the point is direct, direct democracy doesn't work because people aren't going to be informed enough. They're not gonna do enough work to understand uh, all the, the bits and pieces, the implications of certain policy. And uh, I'm not saying somebody who's informed can't come up with the wrong answer, but you're more likely to have the right answer and if you're at least informed on uh, the dynamics and the function. It's like, you're going to serve on a jury and you don't know nothing about the science they're talking about in terms of the quality of the evidence, you're not a very good juror. Uh, so, yeah, it's better to have representatives who uh, presumptively are, are, are obligated to uh, do that research, uh, take the time to understand. Um, it's their job. To understand, uh, essentially, uh, their full-time, well-paid job uh, to get it right, um, theoretically. And I think you do need that, though, uh, to have good policy, to write good law. Uh, yeah, you have to. It has to be somebody's full-time job, or they're not going to write good law. Uh, so I think that's why the idea of representation, the idea that we would all um, strip ourselves down, uh, you know, to a hundred or five hundred, <laughs> you know, um, bits of information, uh, interest points, even just ten interest points, and that we would proportionally be given representatives who share common, or the most common, or the most common as possible interest points. Uh, so, if I said uh, I thought Jack Kevorkian was a great human being, um, he, I would, I would be pleased to have him represent me, uh, you know, at any meeting or conference or in the Congress of the United States. And uh, he certainly could have gotten elected to Congress if he could have run nationally rather than in one state full of Catholics. <laughs> so. Um, and that's what I'm basically talking about, is having a, a democracy where Congress is a bunch of ideological seats, not geographic seats. So whether you have 100 congressmen or 200 congressmen, the idea would, you, would be is that you would, uh, proportionally, they'd all represent actual citizens, and they never would represent people who voted against them. They'd only be there through... Uh, positive votes 
and uh, you know through a system of instant runoff voting, applying that, getting rid of the geographic problem, and applying instant runoff voting, um, you can create a system where, yeah, your representative is going to be a lot like you. <laughs> He's going to be somebody you voted for, and if he displeases you, uh, you can always vote for somebody else, but I'm just saying it's going to mean something when you vote for somebody else. Because he's going to need those affirmative votes. Um, and uh, so then the idea of betrayal and, and uh, compromise and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff is it's not going to be a, a problem anymore. Because um, you're not going to vote for a liar. If you've got the choice, if all you've got is a choice between a liar and a thief, <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes you'll vote for a liar because you don't want to vote for a thief. Um, but if you have a choice to vote for the best man, uh, you'll vote for the best man. Uh, you don't want a liar representing you. You don't want your name on a statue of a liar. <laughs> you know, uh, you really don't. And so uh, democracy can actually mean something. Uh, it can be more than a train wreck. Uh, it can be a, a force of involving people in their civilization, uh, involving them in the issue argumentation, uh, making them accountable for who they did vote for. It can have all kinds of very positive influences rather than just this what special interest will steal uh, the power of our government, the power of our collective industry. Uh, and that's the system we have now. It's wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. The person I must communicate with is not at home. Bugger. Anyway. So, uh... Till next time, and such. Whatnot. Sorry, not much of a video, but this subject always gets a little convoluted. It's just hard to explain the subtleties of uh, system dynamic and function. Oh, I certainly understand. Fortunately, people don't. So, till next time.